Good morning, family of God. God bless you. Welcome to the Morning Devo. Uh, my name is Mr. Sam Lopez, a.k.a. DJ Sam Rock, a.k.a. Brother Sam. And I want to invite you Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 7 a.m. Pacific Time to the Morning Devotionals. I try to do these live as much as I can. Um, we've been having some, you know, renovations in the house and the studio and everything going on. So the noise level in the morning was just a little bit too much for me to do the lives in the studio. But I'm back and I hope you're going to be blessed by today's morning devotional. Invite a friend, tell a family member, tell everybody you know that it's a morning devo with a brother who just simply said yes to the Lord. And now God is using this ministry and he's using your life as a testimony, a testament to his faith, his love, his grace, his mercy upon you and upon me. Let's join together and let's get into this morning devotional. Amen, amen. Welcome, family of God. Welcome to the blaze, the morning Devo with your brother DJ Sam Rock. And forgive me for putting all those pre rolls up front because uh, I woke up and forgot to turn my camera on. That's what happens in the morning uh, with your brother DJ Sam Rock. And look at that, I'm moving cameras around right here live. Amen. So we're here. Good morning. God bless you in my area, in my part of town. It is pouring, raining. So if you hear like the, the rain all over the studio, Whatever, I don't know if you're hearing that, but it's pouring right now. Um, but praise the Lord. Amen. We need the rain. Amen. Just as we need the sunshine, we need the rain. We need the clouds. We need the, uh, the night. We need the day. We need the clouds, the stars, the moon. We need everything that God has made for us to have. And for us, if we could see it, that means God has a purpose for it. Amen. And even sometimes the things we can't see, God still has a purpose for it all. So, God bless you. Welcome to the Morning Devo. If this is your first time, my name is Brother DJ Sam Rock, a.k.a. Mr. Sam Lopez, a.k.a. Brother Sam. And I just want to invite you every morning, Monday through Friday, pretty much from 10 a.m. to around 1040, 1030, around there. When, however the Lord leads. Amen. Sometimes these things go 15, 20 minutes. Sometimes they go to 40 minutes to an hour. It all depends on how God moves and what God wants to say. And if he's done, he's done. If he's not, we continue going. Amen. So God bless you. Welcome to the Morning Devo. Amen. Let me see if, okay, good. I thought I didn't have that up either. Amen. Let me just um, greet some people here. Uh, good morning, Pastor Michael Jakes. Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for joining. Sister Joyce. Amen. God bless you. Good morning to you as well. And my beautiful wife, Vinnie Lopez. Blessing everyone. Amen. Blessing everyone. And yeah, so this is going to be good. Today, what is your faith? Amen. What type of faith or what kind of faith do you have this morning? Just a question to spark up your day. Amen. Uh, what kind of faith do you have? What kind, I'm, I'm going to tell you what type of faith I have. But the question is, what type of faith do you have? As a Christian, you would think that's an easy question, an easy question to answer. But it's not as easy as you think because everybody has faith. When I got up this morning, I had faith that when I sit in the studio on the chair that I'm sitting on right now, 
I had faith enough to think that that chair was going to hold me up. Amen. I had faith to know that I was going to have my camera ready. Amen. And obviously I didn't have it ready. And I also had faith to think that the camera shots were going to be the same and they're different. Amen. That's a certain kind of faith. But I'm talking about what kind of faith do you have if you're going around saying that you're a believer, a Christian, uh, a lover of Jesus, amen, that you believe in God. People already question your faith. They say, what do you have faith in? Some people are going around preaching that they have faith in faith. And I don't want to go down that road, but there's preachers that have faith in faith and they're teaching their people, their followers to have faith, not in Jesus, but to have faith in faith. And then you get to Jesus. So it's a weird way of saying it, but that's what people do. So many Christians today have blind faith. Like they just believe you go up to somebody and say, why do you, why do you believe in Jesus? Oh, because, you know, my grandfather, my grandma, they were Christian. They took me to church. Um, they have reasons that they believe other than their own reason. They have faith in other people's faith. They have faith in other people's religion. They have faith in other people's experience with God. They have faith with church. They have faith with people they follow but when you ask them why do you believe and what kind of faith do you have some people like shy away from that they have really no idea what that's all about amen but in other words other christians that when you ask them you know if you ask me what kind of faith i have i'll give you an answer but other people amen either they're afraid to really come out with it you know come out of hiding and say hey i'm a believer in the lord jesus christ and i believe that jesus is god or other Christians, they identify as Christians without reason to believe. They have no reason to believe other than how they grew up. Maybe they grew up in a church and all that stuff. I had a Jehovah Witness friend that I used to work with years ago and asked him, why are you Jehovah Witness? Because he, he used to always make fun of me being a Christian and me believing that Jesus is God. He always made fun of that. And I found out he was a Jehovah Witness. So I asked him, why are you a Jehovah Witness? He really didn't have no reason why he was Jehovah Witness other than that his family was Jehovah Witness and that he grew up in that faith and then he got baptized into Jehovah Witness and all that, however they do the ceremonies to get in. And he really didn't have his own personal reason. So I say, if you don't have your own personal reason, then why are you doing something that you yourself don't even know why you're doing it? Amen. And that's not the type of faith as a believer that we should have. We should have belief in Jesus because there's evidence to believe or there's a reason to believe and we should be always ready to give a reason for our faith and i know you probably don't believe me i, I have to get this off my head so excuse the shot for a second there you go Oof. that, that would have bothered me all through the, the broadcast first peter chapter 3 verse 15 but sanctify the lord god in your hearts in other words set the lord jesus apart in your heart Set, sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and allow and always, excuse me, and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Amen. So set the Lord Jesus apart in your heart, set him apart in your heart, right? And be ready, be ready and always be ready. The scripture says, always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you with meekness and fear, your reason for your hope that you have and meekness and fear. Now, meekness, people, it rhymes with weakness and people say oh, meekness is weakness. It's not. Meekness is actually the power of God that he gives us. Amen. Controlled. Because if you unleash that power, you'd be like a superhero. If you unleash that power, you know, you know, recklessly, it could hurt someone. The power of God in us. If it's not controlled by Jesus, by God, Holy Spirit himself, amen, it could wreck someone. It reminds me of uh, the X-Men with the eye, the X-Men with the eyes. I think his name is Cyclops or something like that. And when he didn't have those glasses on, we took those glasses off, it, a beam of light or a beam of laser would come out of his eyes and it, it would really be a bad day um, for any other superhero, whether they were his friend or not, because he had no control over that power. But when he put those glasses on, you would say that that's a Christian's meekness, power under control. Amen. Controlled by God himself and fear, reverence for who we're believing in and reverence for God and reverence also for the person asking. People you shouldn't be going up to Christians afraid to access why we believe they shouldn't be afraid of getting yelled at and 
start a big argument. Why do you believe, Sam? What kind of faith do you have? Well, I have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ because he changed my life. Um, in 2001, I was going one way. He met me where I was, and now he's taking me to where he's going. Amen. I believe in Jesus because he performed sign miracles and wonders in my in my life. I believe in Jesus because he answered prayer. Amen. And there's biblical facts about him. There's historical facts about him. He's real. He rose from the dead. He's alive today. He keeps on speaking to me. His word is true. It lines up with my life. I have a lot of reasons why. And I can tell you what kind of faith I have. And it's not a blind faith. I could see what God is doing in my life. And the things that I can't see him doing in my life, I trust and believe that he's still doing something even if I don't see it in my life. Amen. With these natural eyes. So 1 Peter 3.15 is a good point of reference to go to um, when you're thinking about this whole thing about how to share your faith. When people ask you what kind of faith do you do you have or why do you believe in God? Why do you believe Jesus is God? If you have the Lord Jesus sanctified, like if you have him separated in your heart, separate and always ready to give a defense to everyone to ask. So if, if the Bible is telling us to give a defense to the reason why we believe in Jesus, that means it's going to be attacked. Um, so we have to defend the reason why we believe. I like to be on the offensive. I don't like to offend, but I like to be on the offensive, offensive. And I don't like to be like, oh, man, why are you asking me that? It's personal. Because some people you ask, you know, do you believe in God? They say, well, I don't want to talk about that. That's too personal. Yeah, it's a personal thing and it's a private thing, but it should be public if you truly believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. God bless you, Titi Jenny. God bless you. Good morning. God bless you. So if you identify as a believer or as a Christian, you can also identify because the faith that you have. Not because of the faith of your family. I hear, I hear this a lot. You know, people grow up in the church and they automatically think they're Christian. People say they're Christian because their grandmother, their grandfather, their parents, their uncles, aunts. Um, I, hear, I hear this a lot. And there was one time I asked a, a person, I said, hey, um, are you a believer? Yeah, yeah. You're a Christian? Yeah, yeah. I, I asked them, do you go to church? They said, yeah, I go to church. What's the name of your pastor? Um, they didn't know the name of the pastor. What's the name of your church? Oh, yeah, you know, it's over there, um, Pastor so-and-so. Um, you know what? My mom goes, let me ask my mom. Because they think they associated themselves with Christianity or a believer because their parents went to church, a certain church or whatever like that. And that's the kind of faith they have. They have faith in other people's faith. Amen. I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. So, so they attend church. So because they attend church, they automatically think that they are part of the church family, that they're Christian. They attend church. They think it sounded like the best option on their Facebook profile. So you know when you set up your profile, it's a religion or whatever. Uh, they put, you know, faith or Christian or Catholic or whatever. They just throw something in there. Some people leave that alone because they don't want to get into that type of conversation. Other people put Christian. Um, a lot of Americans put Christian just because, you know, it's a popular thing or really not popular, it's being attacked and it's being we're being told to be quiet, shut up, go away, and all that stuff. But we will not be silent, right? A preacher came to my church Sunday, he says, I'm no longer going to be silent. You could tell me to shut up, you could tell me to go away, you could tell me um, that, you know, this, that, and the third, you can't do this, shut down the church, do this. He says, he will not be silent, amen? And we don't have to be silent, amen? We're already speaking as soon as we tell someone that we're a believer we're speaking volumes amen and if you do that with love and you do that with grace and you do that with mercy your faith will be amazing to other people it won't be uh you know argument it won't be you know like a threat to somebody your faith my faith shouldn't be a threat to anyone amen um my faith should be just heard and if you want to try to get more information you ask questions and i'll give you an answer my faith shouldn't be something that people are like oh man you know how could you believe in that um, you know, you must be hating me. You hate me. You hate this person. You hate that person because you believe in Jesus. It shouldn't really be like that. I know there's extreme ideas about Christianity and people take other people's reasons why they don't believe and they hold them to be their own. And if you really ask them, why don't you believe? Where is your faith? What kind of faith do you have? And they'll give you a different answer than the people that they follow. It happened so many times in my life. We were um, evangelizing in the streets of Allentown, Pennsylvania, and on um, 7th Street, where the area is kind of like rough and tough sometimes. And we bumped into these guys that were dressed up in all like these garments, and they were 
supposedly preaching, yelling at people every time they pass by. And we went over there and asked the question, you know, what are you preaching? They say, oh, we're preaching about Jesus Christ, the Lord, this, that, and the third. I said, wow, are you a Christian? No, I'm not a Christian. I'm an Israelite. They went on that route. So we were talking. We got to get into a conversation. And all of a sudden, just turned the other way. And they were getting violent. And people, other people were seeing them get violent. And they were talking about that their faith is like the true faith and my faith and was in the white Jesus and all this other stuff. It could get crazy sometimes, but that's not the type of faith. You know, our faith shouldn't be like a threatening faith. Our faith should be a faith of love. And our faith is placed in and our trust is placed in a person, not a thing, not in a religion, not in a church institution, but in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's where our faith should be. What kind of faith do I have? I have faith and trust in the Lord Jesus. God bless you, Sister Mary Saul. God bless you. Welcome to the Morning Devo. So, blind faith um, its not even cool to have blind faith, to just believe in something without even knowing why you believe it. That would get you in a whole lot of mess, a whole lot of trouble. And then when life hits you, since you have blind faith, you're going to be like, oh, I knew this wasn't true anyway, because you had no root. You had no source. You had no point of reference. You just were believing because you were told to believe. Amen. Do you know right now, you and I can have a personal relationship with the Lord Almighty, the God of the universe, the God who created the stars, the moon, the sky, the God, God who created human beings, mankind, the animals, the God who created everything you see and everything you don't see. You can have a personal relationship with this God right now. And everybody be like, yeah, okay, whatever. What do I have to do? Well, guess what? There's good news for a lot of you. You don't got to do nothing. Amen. What needed to be done has already been done by the Lord Jesus Christ. Over 2,000 years ago on the cross when he laid his life down for me and when he laid his down, life down for you. That's the faith kind of faith that I'm talking about. I'm talking about the faith Jesus. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Grace and truth. Amen. We're talking about him, the one who sacrificed his own life to save our lives. Amen. As a sinner, demonstrated his own love for me and for you that even when we were against him, even when we didn't believe, even when we were dying in our sin, he still died for us and forgave us when we asked for forgiveness. That's the type of Jesus. That's the type of faith. That's the kind of faith that I have. Amen. I have reasons to believe. I also have reasons why I shouldn't be believing right now. I have a lot of reasons to not believe, but the unbelief is trumped by the the miracles of God over my life and my family's life, um, the word of God over our lives, how he proved himself over and over again through his scriptures over my life personally. Amen. So, you know, yeah, I, every every now and then things pop up. But why would this happen? Why would God allow this? Why would God allow that? And it causes me to like go into the little area of doubt. And I can honestly say that because I'm not the only one that doubts sometimes. Amen. So I can say that. And I know I have, I have other people that could agree with me. You might not want to admit it, but, you know, I don't think anybody can have 100 percent certainty of what God is doing in their lives. Why? Because the Bible says that we live in uncertain times. That's number one. And number two, God is way beyond my way of thinking. He's not like me. Amen. He created me. But he's way above my way of thinking. His ways are not like my ways. Amen. So 100% certainty. Oh, I know. I know God's next move. Are you 100% certain that you know the next move that God's going to do in your life? No. If you're honest, think about it. You cannot be 100% certain of what God is going to do and what God, what's the next move God's going to have over your life. The Bible does teach that faith is resting on the promises of God. That's a good place to, you know, to answer. The Bible teaches that faith is the resting promises of God. Hebrews chapter 11, the faith chapter, right? Um, one to six. Now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. So you're hoping for something, but you don't see it yet. But the Bible says that when you place your hope and trust in God, he will never disappoint you for by it. The people of old received their condemnation. By faith, we understand that the universe was created by the word of God. So that what is seen was not made out of things that are visible. What is seen was made by creator God who is invisible. Mind-blowing. Amen. Something 
or someone that we can't see created the things that we can see. That's not faith in faith. That's not faith in me. That's not faith in you. That's faith in the almighty, all worthy, all trustworthy God. Amen. The all loving, the all holy, all merciful, all powerful, all graceful God. Amen. By faith, Abel offered to God a more acceptable sacrifice than Cain. Remember the book of Genesis, the brothers, through which he was commended as righteous. God commending him by accepting his gifts. God accepted a gift from a man. Amen. Then God flipped the script and he gave us a gift that we can never give, you know, give back. We shouldn't be able to give back. Why would we give back the gift that Jesus gave us? But he accepts gifts from men. And through his faith, though he died, Cain killed Abel, he still speaks. By faith, Enoch was taken up so that he should not see death and he was not found because God had taken him. Some people will get swept away. Amen. Um, the Bible says that the, the sting of death won't, it won't get us as believers. Amen. We'll just be transferred from this side of eternity to the other side of eternity. Amen. We got to uh, get out of jail free pass. Amen. Because of what Jesus did. Now, before he was taken, talking about Enoch, he was command, commended as having pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please him. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists, first and foremost, right? If you're going to draw near to God, you're going to have faith in God, you have to believe that he exists. And that he rewards those who seek him. Amen? There, there's a point of reference right there, Hebrews chapter 11. So in Hebrews chapter 11, the writer uses a key word to describe biblical faith. Amen. Assurance. You know, you have a car, you have a vehicle, a motorcycle, a house. You get what we call insurance. And the insurance will cover certain things. Not all things will cover certain things, but you have to pay up front for those things to be covered. And you'll be surprised what's not covered after something happens to your house, your vehicle or whatever. Right. Even health insurance, you'll be surprised what's not covered uh, when you're paying for the health insurance. But that's limited. And who puts the limits on those insurance plans? Men and women put limits on those insurance plans. But the key word in Hebrews here is assurance, not insurance, but assurance. And listen, we were talking about uh, vampirism. You know, there's legalism in the church and now there's vampirism in the church. Vampirism in the church means that there's people uh, in the church that only want the blood. They're only after the blood of Jesus because they know the blood cleanses them from all sin and protects them and cleanses them from all unrighteousness. And they're saved and they get the blood of Jesus and then they go back into the world that crazy and reckless. That's vampirism. I'm going to call it from now on. A legalism tells you, hey, you can't do this. You can't watch this movie. You have to dress a certain way. No makeup. Um, no this, no that. Uh, no pants. No, you only have to, That's legalism. But vampirism, I think, is a little worse because they're only after the blood. Amen. And once they know that they have the blood or they think they have the blood of Jesus covering them, then they go back and doing whatever they want. And they said, well, I got saved. I'm cleansed now from all unrighteousness. And I can do whatever I want to do with whoever I want to do it with, act the way, any which way I want to act. And go back into the world like nothing ever happened because they said they have the blood of Jesus over them. But biblical faith is not blind faith. Biblical faith is not um, investing in just the blood of Jesus. Biblical faith has assurance. Biblical faith isn't blind. Biblical faith isn't wishing upon a star. This is not wishful thinking, right? I don't believe in Jesus because I wished that Jesus existed. Listen, before I got saved, I knew about Jesus. I knew about him. I knew the story, but I didn't know it was for me. And I didn't know it was a real story. I didn't know that that was true in my life. I didn't know that what he died for me as well. I just thought it was for them, the church, the religious people. I never knew that God had died for me. When God took my life, amen, and he showed me, revealed himself to me in the year 2001, December 12th um, into 13, when I woke up uh, around that, those two days, he started changing my life, my heart, my way of thinking. Amen. And I knew that I was like, oh, this is real. Because if I could have changed myself, I would have. Why, why wouldn't I have changed, been able to change myself? 
Sister Joy says, my faith in Jesus, the transformation he made in my life, just to know he gave his life for me, freed me from all my sins, gave me a new life that taught me to love and trust him. That's the kind of faith that Sister Joyce has. Amen. Praise God. So biblical faith is based on reason. And the reason is there's a guarantee. Assurance. Insurance. Limited things covered here and there. Imagine if God gave us life insurance. And Jesus said, well, I'll cover this much. But then I won't cover all of that. I'll cover this, but I won't cover that. Imagine that. And you'd be like, man. And then Amanda and Jesus say, okay, you have to pay these deductibles. So when, when cancer tries to hit your life, when sickness, pain, struggle, financial burdens, uh, relational stuff happens, um, you have to pay $500, $1,000 deductible, depending on what. Imagine if Jesus was that type of person, that type of God, amen? That would be insurance. But Jesus is talking about assurance. God gives us assurance, a reason to believe, a hope, and a guarantee. If Jesus said it, it's, going, it's guaranteed. Amen. And guess what? There is no deductible. You don't have to pay. The cost was already paid. The debt was already paid in full. Tetelestai, when Jesus said it is finished in the Greek, Tetelestai, the debt was paid, paid in full. I have faith in what Jesus did on the cross. I have not, not blind faith. I could see what Jesus did in my life and what he's doing in my life and what he can do in your life. Amen. This is why Peter would say, always be ready to give an answer for the hope that is in you, but do so with gentleness and respect. We read that in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. Christians, Christ followers, listen to this. We are to provide an answer, in other words, reasons or evidence. What's true? Well, and I'll start saying, hey, I think this is true because there's evidence behind it. If I just say something is true because somebody, my neighbor said it's true, or because this preacher said it's true, or because you said it's true, uh, that's not really an answer. That's getting somebody else to answer the question for me. But I have reasons, I have evidence for the hope that I have. And that hope turns into faith, and that faith turns into a relationship with God himself through Jesus Christ. Amen. So I'm going to leave it right there. Um, you can also read Jude 3 and 4. There's only one chapter in Jude, so Jude 3, verses 3 and 4. And you could read that and you could say, ask yourself, why is it important for us to contend for the faith? Amen. Why do we have to um, be ready to have a reason or to contend or defend the faith? Amen. You could read it right there in Jude 3 and 4. So if you're a follower of Jesus Christ and you've been blessed with this morning Devo, what are your reasons for believing? Amen. You might want to write it down because it might be a shocker to you when you get asked that question because you think you get a pass. Like people, oh, oh, that person goes to church, so they must be a believer. They must know the scriptures. They must know why they believe and all that. You'd be surprised. I was in a, I'll leave you with this. I was in a youth meeting, amen, just being nosy because uh, I miss um, ministering to the youth. So, I, you know, they were teenagers. And in that room, they were what I thought were seasoned teenagers that grew up in the faith and all this other stuff. So they asked me if I had any questions to ask. And I said, yeah, um, how do you know you're saved? And it was maybe like 30 kids in there, teenagers, and nobody had an answer. And that was a shocker to me. I was like, ooh, the very basic thing, right? You would think people or children that grew up in a church or teenagers that say they believe, they didn't know why they believe. And I'm praying that this generation that's coming up, that's rising up, the young adults, the teenagers that are coming up, they will have assurance they will have reasons of why they believe they won't have blind faith they will have faith and place their trust in the lord jesus christ that's my prayer for the generation that's coming amen uh, my generation and the generation um that's older than me amen um, we should already have that settled in our heart amen but we got to pray for those that are coming next amen that they have a reason for the uh they know how to answer and give a reason for why they believe and they won't have blind faith because that'll be you know, blind faith, but they will have a reason of why they believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Sister Mary. So, uh, God bless you. God bless you. Oh, I have two Mary souls here. So I have Marisol and I have Maggie Saul. Amen. God bless you both. So I'm out of here. God bless you. God keep you. Remember always that God is good. Read the scriptures again. First Peter three fifteen. 
than we were in Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1 to, I believe, 11. Um, just look up Hebrews chapter 11. I was in there. And also Jude 3 and 4. Amen. There's only one chapter in Jude. So Jude verses 3 and 4. So I'm out of here. God bless you. God keep you. Remember always that God is good. I hope you were blessed by this morning Devo. Have a blessed day, everyone, my wife says. And be good. Be safe. If you were blessed, the website right down there on the bottom right of the screen. You could go there, find out um, how you can support this ministry. Help Soul Winners Inc. support other ministries and help Soul Winners help other families that are struggling right now. It could be uh, a seed of faith. Listen, I would really want your prayers more than anything else. Amen. But other families need more than just prayer. They need substance. They need a way for them to get out of situations that cost and it costs them money. Amen. And if I'm able to help in any single situation um, that has to deal with that, amen, I'll be blessed. And you'll be blessed as well for sowing a seed into a ministry that's sowing seeds into other ministries and into other families. The kingdom of God operates that way. There should be no lack in the kingdom of God. Amen. And those who ask, amen, we should be able to give. We should be the head, not the tail. We should be above, not below. Amen. We should be the lender, not the borrower. That's how we should be according to the scriptures. So God bless you and have an amazing day. And I'm out of here. Peace. Blazing Bible studies.